Well, well, well. Hello, hello, fellow developers. Welcome to our meetup in JavaScript Fury series, uh, where we will discuss the existing topic of extending uh, an existing application. Our speaker for tonight's event is Luis uh, Felipe Deofilo, a lead uh, software and AI engineer, senior lecturer at the Polytechnic Institute of Viana da Castello, and former director of engineering at Toptal and CTO at Infra. P-L-A-N, LLC. I hope I pronounced it right. With uh, his extensive experience and knowledge in the field, uh, he's just the right person to talk about JavaScript, you know. Uh, the meetup uh, is ex expected to last approximately 75 minutes. We encourage you to use uh, the chat feature to ask questions, uh, which we will address both during and at the event, uh, at the end of the event. And uh, again, uh, as an added bonus, we will holding a draw for those who ask the most uh, interesting, unique, creative questions. The lucky winners will receive uh, prizes from Lemon IO. And uh, once again, I would like to thank our speaker, Luis, uh, for joining, joining us uh, tonight and uh, all of you for taking the time uh, to attend this event. I pass my words to Luis. Hello, Luis. Hello, Darina, and hello, everybody uh, that came to attend to this talk. I'm very glad to be here, and uh, I want to, to thank uh, in advance to Lemon IO to extending the invitation to do this series of talks that I've been doing. Thank you for joining, and thank you for helping us. Absolutely. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, slides, please. All right. So, uh, uh, so for for the ones that have been uh, with us uh, last week, uh, so we initiated a, a, a talk and a lecture about how to create a browser extension. So, uh, in in today's talk, we are going to take a, a step uh, a step further. So. Uh, for the ones that were not here, of course, I will do a quick revision of what we talked about so that you can uh, uh, follow, uh, still follow this presentation. So feel free to uh, send any questions during the presentation. I will, uh, I will take a look uh, at them from time to time to make uh, this session more dynamic. Um, hello. Hello from Portugal, by the way. I saw a uh, nice comment from Mugato. Uh, okay, so about the, the topic. Uh, uh, so, extending... Uh, uh, so, this is a, uh, a sentence uh, that I, uh, I uh, like to associate with uh, what it means to extend an application. So, uh, it's, uh, it's an act of balance, well, between... Uh, uh, Innovation, of course, if we are extending uh, uh, an existing application, we want to innovate. We want to have uh, new features to that application. Uh, of course, uh, reliability uh, is, uh, is an important topic when we are talking uh, about extensions because um, for many reasons that I will uh, 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 indicate throughout the slides, but uh, essentially uh, when we are extending uh, code, uh, when we don't have access to our, the original source code, of course, reliability will always be a concern. And I will um, talk about that during this presentation. Of course, creativity, because um, as I mentioned in previous talks, so uh, the part of what it is required to create an, uh, an extension is to do some reverse engineering, uh, especially when uh, we don't know anything about the app that we're trying to extend. Uh, so we need to know how it works. Uh, so uh, and that needs uh, creativity. So there are there are a couple of creative ways that you can use to to find uh, to to find how uh, an existing app works. Uh, stability is also uh, very important uh, in this realm uh, because uh, it's. Uh, Typically, you are working on a code base that uh, is not yours, and that can get updated. So, 
that means you will be working on a more uh, on a less stable environment uh, with uh, many things that you can't control. The, uh, for instance, if you're developing a browser extension, let's say to um, record the prices uh, so, uh, of uh, given e-commerce, e uh, and uh, you are uh, crawling those prices from the interface. Uh, if they completely change the interface from one day to the other, uh, it's very likely that your extension might stop working. So, uh, and there is nothing you can do to control that. So stability will always be uh, an issue. And of course, uh, and uh, not less important, responsibility. Because when we are, uh, uh, when we are extending an app and, uh, we have access to uh, different browser features uh, and uh, they have different uh, permission access. Uh, so uh, th uh, it's uh, the developer's responsibility to make sure that everything uh, that you code keeps the app secure, uh, the, uh, doesn't have any leak in terms of information. So uh, we live in a world where uh, cybersecurity is more and more important. Uh, we are always hearing about, uh, about uh, certain attacks, certain information leak, and information is power. So uh, we need to make sure and be responsible to, uh, to make sure that uh, our app uh, uh, is secure. Um, uh, and not only in that perspective, I mean, uh, responsibility, uh, because uh, we are, especially if you are extending someone else's app application. Uh, so uh, there, there are terms of use of the, such applications, and uh, we need to make responsible use of the added uh, power that is to extend an app. Uh, okay, so... Uh, just a quick recap on the last uh, on the last episodes of this uh, series of events. So uh, first, we defined uh, what it was reverse engineering in the, and we explained it in the context of extending functionality uh, of uh, existing applications. Uh, we uh, we also explored, uh, and since th these talks are uh, are are also in the domain of JavaScript, we explored specific details of uh, JavaScript, such as mutation of, of uh, observers or uh, monkey patching uh, or code injection uh, that we can use for reverse engineering. Uh, I also uh, explained uh, on how to create uh, browser extensions, so the basic stuff, which well, I will partially review uh, during this talk. Uh, and we uh, demonstrated how to inject uh, code uh, in existing applications, which we will show uh, as well today. Uh, so you can review the previous lessons uh, in YouTube. So the, the links are available uh, so that you can uh, rewatch the, the lessons. Uh, there's a talk uh, about uh, monkey patching specifically, uh, solely de dedicated to that, that uh, unfortunately had to be uh, postponed because uh, I became ill. But uh, that talk will be uh, done uh, on uh, next Wednesday, uh, 1st of March. So this is the outline uh, for today. So uh, as I like uh, to do in any presentation that I give, I will give you the motivation. So the motivation uh why this topic and why am i talking about this uh not only my own personal motivation but uh, also the motivation for you uh so i'll do a quick recap on uh, what we have done last week because what we are going to do this week uh, is uh, is basically an evolution uh of uh, of the previous week so uh, we are going to basically uh, try to make extension development uh, uh, a bit more professional instead of just being uh, some quick dirty patches uh, on, a, on the existing code we are going to try to make it more professional and i will show uh, show you on how you can completely or almost completely change 
the behavior of a hub, uh, even having, uh, which means even having complex uh, user interfaces inside the existing uh, applications. So uh, I'll speak about uh, integrating two technologies uh, inside the extensions. Uh, one is React that uh, hopefully you will uh, known or, or used or uh, at least heard of. Uh, and the other one uh, is Firebase. So React for the purpose of developing more complex uh, uh, user interfaces uh, and uh, Firebase uh, for the purpose of uh, storing uh, data uh, and persisting data over time with uh, uh, our extension. Uh, then I will uh, add some closing thoughts and then we will open for everyone for a Q&A session. Uh, so let me take a quick look at the chat, uh, see if there is any questions so far. Uh, so we have one from Mugato. Uh, as far as I know, JS uh, run as a single thread. How can we create a new uh, uh, instance of our app? Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I don't fully understand your question. Uh, it's not fully related uh, to the extension development, uh, uh, at least from the first look. But uh, what, what I can tell you is that you can create new instance using service uh, workers. And extensions do leverage service workers. So they have workers that are running uh, uh, on the browser that you can communicate with. So we are going to explore uh, those um, throughout the presentation. Uh, so, uh, and uh, we have another one. How can website owners and developers stay informed about emerging security threats and vulnerabilities and what resources are available uh, to help them? Uh, well, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a very uh, uh, broad question. So uh, in, in the context of extensions, so uh, uh, while it's possible uh, or theoretically possible uh, to check uh, uh, to check if any uh, if there is an extension installed, uh, it's not very easy to uh, to to detect uh, to detect scripts. But I can tell you that uh, I've tried to uh, to extend uh, uh, many applications and and the more uh, well known applications, and uh, some of them uh, implement security features uh, on. Uh, on the code precisely with the technique uh, called mo monkey patching so they uh, they kind of replace uh, the original uh, functions of uh, javascript so that they can have better control uh, over its use so uh, it that makes it easier to detect external use uh, of the applications uh, capabilities I hope that answer is your questions. If it's from more generic perspective, uh, maybe uh, I mean, uh, of course, there uh, there are uh, there are several sources where you can see the newest trends, but uh, I can't answer that very generically. Okay, uh, let's get back uh, and move on. Um, so uh, the why uh, for this uh, topic. So. Uh, we have uh, two actors here. We have the users and we have the developers. So uh, what are the users looking for on an extension? So of course, new features and enhanced user experience, uh, customized browsing experience because extensions can also control uh, the web browser. So they have access to more functionality, uh, such as for instance, uh, 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 interacting with bookmarks or, uh, or with different tabs and, and all of that. So you can have a, a more refined browsing experience using extensions uh, and uh, of course uh, for task automation so we have very well known uh, extensions such as uh, uh, there are several versions of uh, text expanding uh, application where where you can uh, basically transform a tag into a, a text that you write very often this is uh, 
typically used for writing emails or 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 documents in browsers so that uh, let's say that there's a signature that you repeat many many times you can use the text expander to make it easier i will show you uh, an example doing uh, during my demo so uh, and the motivation for developers of course adding features when you don't have access to the source code so uh, the, this uh, th this can happen for uh, for uh, for many uh, for many reasons uh, and uh, sometimes uh, sometimes uh, we just this is just something uh, we need uh, we need to do uh, and it's an easier path just to create functionality instead of uh, recompiling or or even requesting access to the source code we can add uh, functionalities on on the fly without uh, having access to it uh, of course uh, this uh, this can also be used uh, to test and add quick uh, features uh, to our apps uh, without uh, playing around with the original source code. When you, even when you have access, uh, one example that I uh, that I can give is that uh, I typically with my uh, uh, with some customers that I had in the past uh, when I was. Uh, uh when we were planning uh, user interface uh, changes one of the things that uh, th th that i uh, that i was able to to do uh was to use the the browsing tool the browser tools to edit the the css or uh, or the html of the page uh to uh, to try out uh, uh, the new look and feel, so this can also be done through extensions. So you can quickly add a new feature without uh, uh, without having to interfere with the on production code. Uh, of course, the same advantage uh, already referred to the users. So manipulating web pages, bookmarks, or even storing data, so uh, you have access to different functionalities uh, uh, of your browser. And uh, uh, finally, you can create interactions between different applications. This is a huge advantage. Uh, and uh, I will show you a specific example uh, uh, of this. So uh, what is the what is my story? Why, uh, uh, why did I find this a relevant topic? Uh, so uh, I'm. Uh, there was a specific job that I had in the past where I was uh, a, 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 I was using applications, but I was basically a user. But I was I was also a developer. I mean, I was not working as a developer for that company, but uh, I had development skills. So I was repeating the same task over and over again, uh, like uh, like sending template uh, template uh, emails or uh, or. Uh, uh, recording uh, certain sections of the applications uh, or, or moving uh, data from one application to the other so it was very very confusing and i was wasting a lot of time so uh and as i always say so we uh, um the best developers always try to uh they are let's uh, we can call them lazy and being lazy does have uh, the the advantage of most people that are lazy, uh, they try to work smart. Not saying that everyone that works smart is lazy, but uh, the fact that you don't want to repeat the same task over and over again uh, um, makes you think, hey, why, why don't you, I do this investment of uh, uh, just using my coding skills? Because that's what programmers do. The developers uh, just... Uh, eliminate uh, repetition that's part of our core job so since i'm a developer i'm repeating all these tasks over and over again and this could be easily solved with code so let's go uh, uh, let me do the code uh, to stop repeating my daily tasks and that's what i did so uh, i created a, a simple browser extension that connected all the tools that we had at that company and i had a couple of functionality uh, so this has uh, this had a nice ending because that uh, extension ended up being uh, the basis uh, for the new product uh, that integrated everything so it all started in a in an extension uh, 
so uh and uh, today we have uh, an extra motivation so uh, i already uh, showed you uh, on how to uh, uh on uh, on why uh on good reasons to create extensions uh, and i had a particular good reason but uh in that story uh, the extension that i was building that later on became a product uh I, I was having more and more and more difficulties to add new uh, functionality because the the first version uh, of the extension was kind of aki. Uh, I mean, uh, it was it consisted mostly of uh, vanilla JavaScript with small patches here and there. So uh, I, I I was not uh, I was using the basic uh, extension structure, so I couldn't even include the uh, libraries and uh, other things. So everything that I added uh, from simple date pickers was all done from scratch. So uh, and I I needed more functionality. So uh, so uh, like all developers do, uh, I tried to research uh, for a way uh, to reuse or project an architecture that allows me to reuse uh, existing components, uh, use uh, libraries and framework that uh, could allow me to speed up uh, the development process of the extension. And uh, uh, basically, my goal was to make the extension development a, a little bit more professional. So uh, with a focus on cold quality and maintainability, because, uh, uh, and this is a fact, so there are uh, companies that uh, whose product uh, are uh, browser extensions so uh, we can't uh, think of extensions just as a as a as an act to existing applications no we can do way more than that and we can create very very complex stuff so uh, uh so this is part of my motivation to uh do this uh this second talk about creating uh, uh extensions so I will do uh, now a quick uh, recap uh, on uh, on the definitions that we explored uh, last week. Uh, and uh, but before that, let me just see if we have uh, any question. Uh, okay, I don't think we have any at the moment. So let's let's move on. So definitions: What are uh, browser extensions? Uh, Software programs that add new features to Chrome. Uh, in this case, I'm going to focus on Chromium-based browsers, uh, which are most used by far. Uh, so uh, browsers such as Google Chrome, uh, Edge, Brave, Opera. So uh, in principle, any anything that you implement for a, any extension that you implement for a Chromium-based uh, browser should work on the other browsers as well. Uh, um, uh, as long as you don't uh, don't use or you prepare your calls the regarding browser specific features but uh, in principle uh, you should not have any issues so uh, ex extensions can mo modify the web applications add new functionality uh, and integrate with other online services we are going to explore one the integration with uh, with firebase this week uh, so uh, we also allow for uh, web applications and browser functionalities to interact with each other. And we have a question. Uh, yes, uh, um, it is possible to use uh, custom uh, custom elements uh, in the context of browser extensions. I will show you how to do that uh, during the demo phase. Uh, so, uh, Continuing on the basics, uh, so uh, we need, uh, of course, we need a browser to install the extension, uh, either Chromium, uh, Google Chrome, uh, Opera, uh, and and others. So, uh, in order to develop an extension, you actually don't need uh, uh, any develop uh, any other dependency installed on your computer uh, to run an extension. Very basic one. You only need a browser. Uh, the browser has everything you need uh, to run it, so you don't need to install uh, npm or node or anything like that. Of course, today we will require uh, uh, some uh, dependencies, 
because we are going to do this a bit more professionally. But uh, in general, and uh, if you are just running with vanilla JavaScript, you don't need to install uh, anything. Basically, uh, in order to load an extension, you just need to enable the developer mode on your browser and, down and load uh, and load a folder with a manifest file. So the, the, the manifest file, uh, so uh, the folder of our extensions uh, is composed of several files. One of the files is the manifest file, which is kind of the configuration of the extension. So uh, when you load an extension, uh, you just need to search uh, for a folder that has a manifest file in the right format, of course. So uh, in that folder, there will be uh, JavaScript uh, code files, of course, and uh, potentially resources like images, uh, icons, and other uh, music and other things, any kind of resource. <coughs> so um, uh, as I was saying, so these are the, the key components. So we have the, the, the manifest file, which, is, which has the configuration. So in terms of the JavaScript files, we have two types uh, of JavaScript files, which are the background scripts. So those run with the browser. Uh, so they are always running uh, while the extension is enabled. Uh, and these background scripts will interact with content scripts. So uh, the, the content scripts are, are scripts that we are injecting uh, directly into the web applications. So uh, the, the difference here is that uh, they have a different kind of access. So background scripts have more access to browser uh, functionalities. The injection scripts have more access to the functionality inside the web application. And they interact with each other. Uh, for instance, uh, one typical use for background scripts is to cache data to be used uh, by injection scripts. Uh, you have also uh, two other elements, which is the pop-up and the options page. So basically, uh, the pop-up is a small pop. Uh, so whenever you install an extension, uh, you can find, uh, at least on Google Chrome, you can find them on the right uh, top corner, uh, the list of extensions that are installed. Uh, if you uh, if you click the icon, there will be uh, for some extensions that have the definition of a pop-up. Uh, you will see a, a small uh, interface coming uh, from that pop-up. So uh, this is one of the components that you can define on the extension, and you also have the options page. So uh, both uh, both of these are used for mostly for configuration purpose, so that you, we can change options uh, of our uh, extension. So uh, we also have uh, other type of assets, as I mentioned. And uh, uh, in this presentation, we will be mostly focusing on content scripts, but also uh, actually also on background scripts. Uh, uh, because we will, uh, we will need those uh, to communicate uh, with uh, Firebase. So, uh, <coughs> Again, on, uh, on, uh, on the recap. So last week, we developed three extensions for uh, OpenAI ChatGPT. So uh, I selected uh, ChatGPT because it, it has a very simple interface and it's trendy. So I showed how you could uh, modify uh, the user interface of ChatGPT. And uh, uh, basically, um, uh, all the extensions that we developed consisted in adding new UI elements to the original UI. Uh, or or change the behavior of the existing uh, UI elements. Uh, so uh, I think we got a question. Will website extensions affect website SEO and search engine uh, rank, uh, rankings for a website built with React and or Next.js? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, so uh, whenever the, the the applications are visited. Uh, by Google robots and crawlers, or uh, or any other search engine, uh, they uh, they visit uh, the applications without uh, without the extensions being installed. So uh, uh, in this case, the answer is a uh, is a no. Continuing, so uh, the Hello World application basically uh, it prints a message uh, informing that 
the content script was successfully injected and changed the look and feel of uh, ChatGPT. So basically, we added the Lemon.io uh, colors to the user interface. Uh, so the other application that we have created uh, was a mini text expander. Uh, as I said uh, at the beginning of the presentation, text expander is basically uh, is, a, is an application that allows you to uh, replace certain tags or keywords with uh, by other texts. So this is useful for uh, uh, write uh, when we have to repeat writing the same stuff over over again, like. Uh, Hey, write me uh, 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 the email uh, uh, goodbye. Uh, in most emails, my goodbye is best regards, Luis. Uh, so I don't want to write uh, uh, that uh, uh, every time. So I just can create. I can just create a template uh, uh, where I uh, where I type, uh, let's say underscore goodbye, and that will replace by my signature. Uh, that would be an example. So uh, basically, what we did was to create a text expander for ChatGPT. So whenever we wrote uh, some specific keyword, that keyword would be replaced by uh, by certain text. Uh, and we also did the email sender. So uh, this one was a bit more complex, but it consisted on having a, a small button at the end uh, of uh, each reply from uh, from the GPT to our prompts uh, to click uh, that button and open the uh, Gmail interface uh, with a template uh, for uh, for that email. Uh, so using the content, the generated content as the body of uh, of the email and the title of the page as the subject. Uh, today, so. Uh, Today, we are going to do uh, something even more fun. So uh, we are going to do something a bit more complex, which will be a kind of a, a combination of the send email and the text expander functionality. Uh, first of all, regarding the send email functionality, we are going to do the exact same functionality, uh, but uh, using uh, using React. So, uh, 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 and I will show you a comparison uh, between what we had last week and uh, what we are going to have uh, this week. So, uh, but basically, uh, the the script uh, that we had was very very uh, simple. Uh, we uh, it, it was done in vanilla JavaScript, where basically we were trying to uh, to to find uh, to find the GPT's responses. Uh, uh, DOM element and attach the button manually once we find the DOM element. So uh, basically, what we are going to do is to uh, create this button, but uh, using uh, using React. Uh, and as for the text expansion, we are going to do uh, uh, something a bit more complex. So basically, we will we will not only uh, be able to add templates. Uh, template prompts to the chat GPT, but we are we will also be able to create new prompts and uh, and uh, cr uh, by creating new prompts, uh, I mean persisting them over time. So if we close the browser, shut down the computer, and uh, later on reopen the extension, we we uh, we will uh, keep the prompts that we had before. So uh, the the purpose of this is that. Uh, most people that use uh, chat gpt uh, sometimes there are certain repeated requests that you need to do uh, in order uh, uh, with a few adaptations so we want uh, to make it easier uh, to repeat those uh, prompts uh, let let me just quickly address uh, yuri's question could the extension be used like a persistent background listener and open a web page when received push notifications uh, from the server, uh, yes, uh, that that is uh, that is possible. Uh, uh, that is possible uh, uh, to do. Uh, it might require well uh, from the moment that you can use the full uh, functionality of uh, Firebase. Uh, for instance, you can create a listener to a certain collection if the uh, 
even if the push uh, i'm i'm not i've never read uh, directly push notifications through an extension i believe it's possible but at least uh, if you uh, have some listener uh, uh, storing them in a fire uh, base collection uh, you can read the, those for sure so uh, it's uh, it's always a possibility uh, there's always a, a workaround uh, to that uh, so uh, we will also uh, uh, have some developer requirements for uh, this extension 2.0. So uh, the last extensions, uh, the the last extensions were developed with very basic code, uh, but of course, real world application will require a lot more complexity. So uh, commercial extension needs a proper code structure. Uh, we need to uh, uh, re uh, be able uh, to reuse code and libraries, be able to install dependencies, uh, of course, uh, store data, persist data over time, maybe even communicate with uh, 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 with data from other users, potentially, and many other things. It's just like regular uh, development of an application. So it's uh, so uh, we need all these requirements. So we can't rely just on quick and basic patches uh, to the DOM or uh, basic JavaScript code. So uh, for that reason, we are adapting the, the folder and file structure that you, we used last week. So uh, this is the folder structure that we use, but we have in, uh, in green the new, uh, the new part. So uh, we have uh, a folder for images, a folder for source. Inside the source folder, we have the background folder where, where we will have the background uh, scripts and uh, its dependencies. We will have the loaders, so basically the applications that load content in, uh, into the uh, uh, that uh, that inject uh, uh, scripts into the web applications. And now uh, we have the scripts, but we will uh, have a new folder here uh, with the uh, with the React application that we want to inject. The React application will have a build folder, which we will use uh, to be able. Uh, so we, we will we will basically inject a React build inside an existing application. Uh, <laughs> So uh, we will also uh, uh, have the vendor uh, folder. Uh, the, uh, the reason for the vendor folder is uh, to allow uh, for uh, using uh, uh, certain scripts and dependencies uh, that, that are external. So uh, basically, in this case, uh, uh, since we can't uh, import uh, uh, external scripts without uh, adding permissions, we can still download the, the library's JS files in order to uh, include them in, into our projects. Uh, we are also uh, going to change a little bit our manifest uh, version. Uh, so we are still using a manifest version too. Uh, it's, uh, it's still being used. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be deprecated. Uh, uh, probably during this year. They have been delaying this because many extensions uh, still rely on manifest version two. Uh, but uh, one of the things that we need to have uh, is uh, in, in order to integrate with Firebase is uh, to have access to uh, uh, Firebase IO uh, on our content security policy. As uh, for uh, the architecture, so the architecture will be a bit more complex. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, the script loader, which was injecting a basic script, will now inject a React build. Uh, so basically, we will build, uh, we will do a React build based on the asset manifest JSON that is generated uh, by React apps. So we will read which files were generated, we, and we are going to inject those in the page. So this will generate. Uh, 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 so all, all our React app will be uh, inside this uh, main and the CSS file, uh, and 
this uh, React build will communicate with our uh, index.js background script. Uh, this uh, background script will uh, uh, store uh, uh, prompts that, uh, that we want to reuse uh, in ChatGPT, and we'll also read the existing prompts. Uh, it will also keep the functionality that we had last week of opening up uh, a tab with Gmail, loading a template uh, from the from uh, the chat uh, GPT uh, interface. Uh, and uh, so this is basically it. We will explore uh, it uh, further or during the demo. So. Uh, of course, uh, in order to use React, we will need to compile uh, the, the sources and inject the generated script. Uh, uh, so the the generator, uh, so the React app that we are injecting will, of course, require a different uh, index.js uh, file. So the typical index.js file will attach to a body uh, uh, the to the body of the page, the, the, the main React component. And uh, from there, you will have the entire app. So here, we will need to use a slightly different structure, uh, which will be based, uh, and I define this as a widget structure. So basically, we have a group of widgets that we want to inject. Uh, and using uh, uh, DOM queries uh, to select where we want to inject, uh, so basically, a widget is composed of uh, uh, a React component and a query to inject that component uh, in a certain place uh, in our application. Uh, so uh, our content, uh, so uh, Firebase, uh, Firebase, uh, we will use Firestar, which is the, the uh, document uh, collection and document oriented database of uh, firebase so as opposed to real time by uh, firebase uh, real time database which is more uh, json style uh, but uh, we will be using uh, firestar uh, all the access to firestar will be done on background scripts even though it can be done on content scripts uh, depending uh, it, it depends on the application some applications uh, Found uh, I found some applications that found ways to uh, prevent this, but it, it generally uh, uh, can. Uh, so basically, uh, the content script, the architecture is that the content script will send a request to the background script, which will send uh, a request to uh, to Firestore uh, and then uh, send information back to the content script in case there's need for the reply. Uh, so, uh, but other than that, the structure will be will be similar to a typical React app. So, uh, can we uh, please change to to my screen? There we go. So, uh, I will first uh, show you uh, uh, the functionality that that was implemented, just to make it easier. So. Uh, so the first one is that uh, uh, for every uh, every prompt that. Uh, that uh, ChatGPT uh, uh, replies to us, we will have the send email uh, button. So uh, uh, if I ask to write something else, uh, uh, it will add dynamically uh, the button. Whenever we, we click the button, it will uh, open uh, the Gmail interface with a reply from uh, ChatGPT. So this can be useful for instance, if you use chat uh, GPT to draft uh, emails uh, for you. Uh, so I will discard this message. So, uh, and uh, uh, for today, we have the, we, we added a new button uh, to, uh, to have a, uh, uh, to add a, a prompt uh, directly to, uh, to, to chat GPT. So uh, basically, if, oh, can we share my screen oh, again? Okay, thank you. Uh, if we click the, if we click the uh, the bottom, we will have uh, 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 an interface, a pop-up interface 
that will allow me to uh, to select a, a, a prompt that I already uh, had written. So, for instance, I want to write a song about singularity, and uh, when I click on load, uh, it will load me automatically the prompt. Uh, so this way, I can have several same prompts. Uh, 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 to, to be reused. So I will stop the generation. Uh, we don't need to, to finish this. So, but if we select an, another prompt, uh, write a tweet about how awesome Lemon.io is. Uh, so uh, every time we, we click there uh, and uh, click on load, it will, uh, it will uh, uh, write a different tweet. So, um, we can also add new uh, new uh, new uh, new prompts. Uh, write uh, for the uh, React component for the React component. Uh, uh, to do to output hello world. I mean, it, it's probably not a. a, a a, a prompt that we will use a lot because it will likely uh, send always the same uh, kind of reply, but uh, this is just for the sake of demonstration. So I've saved and uh, now we have access to that prompt. Uh, and we can uh, we can load it. Okay, so as you saw, we just extended the, uh, the, the functionality uh, of uh, of chat uh, GPT uh, with these uh, aspects. So I'll go, uh, I'll stop the generation and I'll go to the code. By the way, just to show it over. So uh, it, the email uh, also works with the uh, new generated prompts. Uh, so going to the code structure. So this is the, the third part. So uh, we we are going to start. Uh, so the, the the manifest file will uh, will uh, so basically uh, whenever uh, we will have two content scripts. So one for uh, 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 for OpenAI, uh, the other one for for Gmail. So uh, so these scripts will be executed uh, in. Uh, Whenever we open uh, uh, a new URL with this pattern, so uh, uh, as for the the script loader, so basically we are going to uh, to inject uh, a React app uh, this time. So uh, this was the main change. So basically, uh, what we are what we are doing uh, first of all, we are uh, Loading this uh, this script uh, into the to the page. This will allow us to uh, 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 to know inside the, the injected application what is the ID uh, and the URL of our Chrome extension. This will later on will allow us to communicate uh, with that extension. Uh, we are uh, the first step here is to read the the, the manifest uh, the asset manifest file from uh, the generated React script. So whenever you do a build of React, the asset manifest JSON will be generated, uh, which tell us uh, which, uh, which files were, uh, were generated. So we will need the, the, the JavaScript and the CSS files, uh, basically. So these are the ones that we, that we are injecting. So, uh, so we are loading the CSS file, and then here the JavaScript file. So, uh, this is a function you can review the previous call, uh, uh, the previous uh, presentation, where we are uh, uh, injecting the code with a script tag uh, into our application. So, uh, going to the React tab. So, uh, this is, uh, as I said, this is a bit different than the typical index.js from a React. Uh, App. So, uh, so uh, basically, uh, we have uh, we have uh, uh, a couple of uh, elements here. So, uh, 
uh, uh, first of all, we have uh, we are changing the fab icon. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, actually, it's not sure if it's if it's working uh, right now. But anyway, this this was meant to change the the fab icon. Maybe maybe uh, uh, maybe. Uh, Maybe it stopped working. Anyway, uh, so we are also loading uh, font awesome icons. So this is used uh, uh, to load these icons uh, into the uh, uh, to have this icon of the uh, photography machine um, for this button. Um, we also have the. Uh, the list of uh, uh, widgets that we are going to inject uh, on our application. So uh, basically, uh, each widget we have two widgets. We had uh, we had the widget to uh, to send uh, uh, to send an email, and I placed all the widgets in my widgets folder. Uh, so uh, it's basically a component to send the emails. Uh, and for each widget, I have the component, the a function to retrieve the parent elements where I'm going to inject that widget. So basically, uh, this is how we uh, find inside the original application the elements that we want to inject uh, uh, this component. Uh, uh, a Boolean saying if this widget is enabled. Uh, and here, a description of the container tags. So basically, what we are going to do uh, we are going to search for a certain element in a page. We are going to have a containing element. In this case, it will be a div with this style. And uh, uh, inside that div, we are going to have the React component. Okay. So same thing for the add template uh, button, uh, which has a similar structure. So for each widget, I'm setting up a uh, 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 I'm setting up a, a, a component. Uh, I'm setting up an interval to check uh, for the parent elements. So uh, I'm using a pooling uh, uh, in this case. So I'm basically uh, on an interval of every uh, 500 milliseconds. I'm I'm uh, checking the widgets uh, and see if we have any new parent uh, element that doesn't have a uh, fury uh, widget installed okay so i'm mar i'm marking each element with this tag with this attribute to make sure we don't install the same widget twice uh, in the same element so uh, after that in order to install the widget so uh, uh, so basically uh, we create uh, the container element uh, we uh, we assign the container uh, the, uh, the container style to the to the container element and we are uh, appending uh, the the container to the root element so to the parent element that we found on the original application and then we are rendering uh, each separate uh, element uh, using react on so uh, each element will uh, will not have the application as a parent but uh, uh, the container a, a dynamically created container as a parent. So, um, as you see, uh, we are adding uh, we are adding way more stuff uh, here. So, uh, we included style uh, trend provider, uh, vase provider, and uh, we are drawing the widget component that was selected. So, uh, as you see, we can. Uh, so, in this case, I've uh, used base UI, which is a common components library. Uh, just to show you that we can uh, add external libraries uh, easily uh, uh, to uh, to add new components. So, um, and let's take a look at the widgets. The send email button, which is the most simple one. So, uh, and uh, this is way more structured. So uh, before we even go to here, let's take a look at what we had uh, uh, last week. So uh, whenever, uh, so uh, we we were following the same approach. So an interval to find elements inside the page and to attach 
the bottom whenever we found a new element. Uh, and uh, we were assigning the, the style and uh, adding event listener. So this was raw vanilla JavaScript. Of course, this is much harder to maintain. Uh, for a very simple extension like this, it's not very problematic. But if we want to make something more complex, like I've showed uh, to you with, uh, with a pop-up and uh, interface and uh, interface that needs state, this would be very uh, cumbersome. So, uh, so that's why uh, we moved this to React. So, uh, and but we can uh, delete this to make it more simple. But uh, basically, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we have uh, basically the bottom that we want to have. The style uh, comes from, uh, from uh, the external CSS that I've added to style the bottom. So uh, we don't have the, uh, the code anymore. Uh, inside the same element. Uh, we are using the on-button on click handler to open up uh, uh, the email uh, email interface. So the, uh, the, the, uh, as I've shown you uh, last week, so uh, to open up an email, uh, the email interface, we need to ask the background, background script uh, to, uh, to send the, the template. Uh, so we need to send a template that we want to open, uh, store uh, store that template, and then open up uh, the ex the the Gmail interface with uh, with also uh, with also uh, a script uh, with a content script that retrieves that template. So uh, the information uh, flows through many parts here. So. Uh, Basically, with the with this new instruction, we can use import, so we can separate all this logic. So uh, you are able to send uh, to open up the Gmail interface with just uh, an extension post message uh, uh, in a separate uh, file. So we send an email. Uh, we retrieve the uh, uh, the subject from the page title, which is a work. So this component refreshes whenever the page title uh, changes. So it's a very basic React hook. Uh, and uh, when we click the bottom, we are uh, sending the body of, uh, of the markdown uh, of, uh, of the parent element that is attached to the uh, where the send email uh, bottom was uh, inserted. <clears throat> Moving on to, uh, to our template button. So uh, here. Of course, uh, please don't mind the the, the, quant the high quantity of code uh, in here. So this is just for demonstration purposes. Of course, we could uh, uh, potentially uh, make uh, this much more simple, separate into several components. I've not done that for this uh, for this demonstration, but this is just to serve as an example. But uh, here we have a, a, mo a much more complex structure. So we already have a state that we need. Uh, to keep for the prompts that we are inserting, uh, we have the selected prompt. We uh, we are uh, uh, injecting the selected prompt uh, into uh, into uh, chat uh, GPT. So uh, the 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 structure is a uh, way more uh, more complex. By the way, uh, this is how we we are injecting the 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 selected prompt into the te text area of the ChatGPT interface. So uh, how does this communicate? So, and I, I will have to move on a, a bit faster, but uh, we will we can uh, later on provide you uh, access to, uh, to this so that you can, uh, yes. Uh, we actually already have a question about that. Yes, I can provide the, uh, this in a Git repository so that you can explore and make uh, your tests and changes uh, and play around uh, with it. Uh, so uh, important part here, uh, we created the, uh, uh, so uh, of course we have this uh, under live uh, lead folder, we have the, the, the functions that communicate and post message to the extension, but uh, we also have a function to set up a listener 
uh, to extension message, which uh, uh, which is handled by uh, by a, a React uh, a custom React uh, hook is message uh, from extension. So this is basically a customized uh, uh, use effect that listens to uh, uh, message that come from the extension and executes uh, 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 a certain uh, callback uh, for that. So basically, and getting back to the uh, to the uh, to the add template button component. So. Uh, Whenever we uh, we read a, a, a message from the extension, which is a list of prompts, uh, we ha we have the the actions related to that. Uh, whenever we uh, a prompt a new prompt is created, we are reloading the prompts. So uh, so this is this work is just to make it easier to communicate with the extension. Uh, moving on uh, very quickly to the background screen. So the the structure is essentially the same. So uh, Basically, uh, we have a, 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 a script that listens to uh, uh, external connections to the extension. So basically, whenever uh, uh, a client uh, re, uh, connects to the extension, uh, we register that on the open ports object. So to make sure we re record any uh, web, uh, any, any tab that is using the extension. And then we have, uh, typical switch case to process each message. So whenever uh, we receive a message to uh, send an email, so we here we have the code to open up the Gmail interface. Uh, whenever we have a, a get email, so this is to retrieve a template. So this is basically used by the Gmail interface. And then uh, we have the new ones, which is uh, get prompts and uh, other new prompts. So basically, uh, and these uh, these functions are uh, are, uh, are are uh, described here. So uh, so basically here we are communicating with uh, with uh, with Firebase. So uh, we are uh, we are lo loading the prompts from a collection on Firestore. Uh, so please mind that we don't have any uh, uh, security verification. This is just for demo purposes. Of course, uh, if you are storing personal data. Uh, uh, you should uh, use uh, authentication uh, to make sure you uh, you have access uh, you you, uh, you you have proper access for each uh, for every user. So if you know that this uh, the current version of the extension in your computers, we will all, we would basically have shared prompts between uh, every single user. Again, this was done like this for demonstration purposes. Uh, so of course you can. Uh, uh, expand uh, on this and make it more secure and more stable. Then again, uh, th these are basic, very basic uh, requests to add a new prompt and to uh, and to get the current available uh, same prompts, uh, which are the ones that we need. So, uh, can we change back to the slides so that I can? Okay. Of course. Uh, what was shown is a couple of limitations, but uh, we already discussed those. Uh, so, uh, to finalize, closing thoughts. Uh, what is the good part of uh, creating uh, extensions? Of course, and, and, uh, the, the main objective, to extend existing applications. Uh, the good part that we approach today is that uh, we can have the ability to use modern libraries and frameworks uh, such as React, uh, and even uh, we can store data uh, in the cloud using Firebase or uh, uh, potentially other uh, technologies as well. Uh, I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't try uh, a lot of those, but at least Firebase we know we can use. Uh, we can uh, this way uh, increase the productivity by automating uh, repetitive tasks, enhance uh, user experience, and uh, integrate different applications. So this is the good part of uh, creating extensions. Of course, with the good comes the bad. Uh, we, uh, 
the bad is that we don't have a, we have a very limited access to the original uh, or 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 uh, most of the times even no access to the original source code uh, this means that it make it can potentially be dangerous uh, to to play around uh, with extensions uh, on a security uh, perspective so there are security risks uh, there are also the risk of uh, it's possible to develop malicious in, uh, extensions to that can steal uh, user data. So once you inject the script, and if you are able to communicate uh, with uh, with uh, with Firestore, so potentially a script can, uh, for instance, uh, 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 access uh, your local uh, your local storage. Of course, with the security policies. You can disable that, uh, that, but the malicious in, uh, extension, especially uh, one that is not in the store, can, uh, for instance, record uh, your local storage uh, variables, uh, which sometimes include tokens, uh, access tokens, into some fire uh, base or fire store or, or any other service. So uh, uh, this can be uh, this can be very dangerous as it allows for accessing very sensitive information uh, it's also time consuming uh to to do extensions because i mean uh, just the time that you spend on reverse engineering uh, the applications can be very uh extensive uh and also sometimes uh, more rarely the these days uh, you might have uh, certain features that are not supported in all browsers which can increase the difficulty of uh of uh, adding, uh, of extending your apps. But uh, again, uh, I didn't experience this, uh, 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 at least in a major way in uh, in uh, recent uh, extensions that I've worked on. So uh, the evil part, so of course, ethical concerns. We talked about this on the very first uh, presentation on this series. So of course, uh, when you are creating an extension, uh, not just the data part and the security part, but we also have the uh, the TOS of the application. So uh, TOSs uh, might not allow you. Uh, so typically, there's a TOS in place that will tell you how you can use the application. and um, a lot of applications do not allow uh, for uh, using extensions. I mean, technically you can, uh, as per the rules uh, of the application, you can, and this can mean you can uh, lose access to the to the application uh, uh, in certain cases. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, some of these issues I already uh, mentioned. Uh, the one that I didn't mention is about the maintenance. So, uh, a maintenance of uh, extensions can be very uh, uh, can uh, require a lot of hard work uh, because essentially uh, we are working and we are extending an app that uh, that we don't control. So, uh, uh, so the app can uh, change completely its layout or. Uh, or change uh, the tags or uh, or the way uh, the DOM is organized and uh, boom, our extension stops working. So it's very important uh, to have uh, in place maintenance, uh, proper maintenance of the code of the extension or make uh, your queries to the DOM as generic as possible uh, to avoid uh, your extension stop working from one moment to the other. Um, and of course, from a per, uh, commercial perspective, if your business is to sell an extension, uh, users may be hesitant to install uh, certain extensions due to the security concerns that I've talked about already. So, uh, as a conclusion, uh, so uh, what what do you think? Uh, this is more of a uh, question for everybody. What do you think about uh, structuring more uh, extension development? I hope uh, you liked uh, the contents uh, and uh, these ideas that I'm sharing uh, on how you can make it a bit more structured, uh, almost like uh, a regular app, almost because there are still things that uh, you need to think on a on a extension way of thinking. But 
I hope uh, you find this content uh, useful to you. To do a quick recap, uh, so uh, today we talked uh, about, uh, we recapped on the basics of creating browser extensions. We defined the new architecture that uh, that not only uses third-party uh, UI component libraries, uh, like base UI that I used to build the pop-up and the buttons that I added into ChatGPT's uh, uh, interface, uh, but we can also store data in the cloud. So uh, the, all the pro uh, all the prompts or the, all the custom prompts that we are adding uh, for uh, text expanding purposes are stored uh, and persisted uh, in the cloud in a Fire uh, Store database. And uh, I also gave you a practical demonstration on uh, how, how to implement extensions using these tools, React and Firebase. So uh, we will have. Uh, uh, another talk in the 1st of January, so next Wednesday, uh, about monkey patching. So this is the talk uh, we were not able to do uh, on the original date, but, but we will still have it. And uh, now I'm opening up uh, for a Q&A session uh, for everyone to ask uh, uh, questions. Do not hesitate. And write your questions uh, right down in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a unique opportunity for Luis to answer them. I see already a plenty of questions during uh, your talk. Yes. And, uh, this is a good sign. It means that the topic uh, we chose uh, is on hype. It's really useful. And uh, please uh, uh, write down your comments on how do you like it. Or is there any other topic uh, you would like to be covered at the Lemonero community? And uh, meanwhile, Luis, before we uh, get some additional questions, uh, I invite you to look through the questions and find one or two questions that could be the champions, uh -huh. uh, the winners of the Lemonero prize. Yeah, uh, we have we have many. Uh... We have uh, many uh, interesting, uh, interesting ones. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, should we uh, should we we first uh, address them or and then select or would you rather that I? Uh, probably, firstly, address all the questions. Okay, okay let's. Uh, okay, uh, let's do that. Uh, okay. So, uh, so uh, let me see. Maybe. Uh, I will, I will try to. So, the first question I, I was trying to find the first question that I did not answer yet. So, uh, Mugato, you were asking if I was using uh, polyfills. Uh, not in this case, even though uh, they uh, they could be uh, useful in some cases. So, uh, so uh, we we uh, we will address polyfills uh, in the in the talk, uh, which uh, which is more related to monkey patching. Uh, it, it, it's on that topic, but uh, yeah, in this case, I didn't use, but of course, you can use them. Uh, so, uh, if I was using a real DOM or virtualized DOM, uh, so uh, both, uh, so we use real DOM to search for the real elements inside the, the applications where we want to inject uh, the React component, which uses a virtualized DOM. Uh, so, uh, we were asked to share the 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 git uh, repository with this code so uh, we will uh, do that so uh, uh, later on is there a way to find out when an extension you wrote uh, is broken uh, that's that's an interesting question so uh, I I would say that uh, uh, that yes so. Uh, so uh, theoretically, uh, I mean, you can uh, you can use uh, uh, you can use uh, UI testing frameworks uh, of, uh, to test uh, to test ex uh, to test extensions. So uh, the same way uh, as you uh, as you test uh, web applications, it's just that you need to configure the virtual browser to load uh, uh, the extension. And it's possible to do that. I've, I've done that uh, uh, before. Uh, so 
in theory, instead of uh, just running the tests when you do a release, you can uh, 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 run uh, run tests on a frequent basis to make sure uh, uh, you detect a, any uh, any issues uh, that are not dependent on your code and are dependent on the on the application that you are uh, injecting code into. So if you run those tests, uh, it will be uh, easier uh, to find uh, new issues. So uh, for uh, for Sean, if if for example you're making many changes in bulk in an essential existing app, does them on a time are there publishing rules so that uh, so your extension is just oh okay, uh, isn't just denial the DOS with too big too many requests. Uh, Sean, uh, it's it's a good strategy. Uh, to uh, to launch uh, functionalities, when, when, uh, I mean, when you're uh, launching your when you're make your extension available in the store, it's a good strategy to keep the number of new features small, because uh, it could happen that uh, uh, if the number of changes is smaller, uh, the code review will take much less time. Uh, and uh, you don't get stuck because sometimes when you have uh, a new functionality, especially uh, functionality that needs to uh, to change security policies, uh, it will uh, take. Uh, sometimes uh, it happened to me from my own experience that it took days uh, for them to review uh, my changes. So we want to avoid that. So um, my recommendation is to try to uh, upload smaller set of changes. Uh, is there, uh, you know, uh, is there a way to make automated tests uh, for the extensions? Uh, yes, uh, I already mentioned uh, that. So uh, uh, you can use uh, the typical uh, uh, the tools. I believe uh, uh, test ca uh, test cafe and uh, uh, maybe uh, maybe puppeteer. Uh, will allow you to do that with uh, virtual uh, browsers. Is permission from the original team something we should aim uh, for? Uh, definitely, uh, Sean. Uh, this is uh, I, ideally, uh, unless it, it's for personal use, uh, you, sh uh, you should, uh, I mean, even if it's for personal use, you, you could be uh, circumventing potentially the 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 TOS of the application. So uh, uh, if possible, we should aim for permission, especially if it's uh, something you are going to publish, OK? Uh, Andy uh, sent, uh, sent a comment, structured way looks more readable and neat. Yeah, that's the idea. So we can have more functionality and more easily. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Bara also sent a nice comment. Thank you. Uh, you got motivated to build an extension. Hopefully, you you can use the the code base that I'm going to share uh, as a base start, so that you don't uh, so that you get started much more quickly. Uh, and uh, you know, additionally to the to automated tests, is it possible to install an extension on uh, web drivers uh, to further customize? Uh, them. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure uh, about this one. Uh, I would I would need to to, to research. So uh, I don't know the answer. Uh, with all honesty, I don't know the answer to that question. Is uh, Dimitro asks if uh, setup uh, significantly different from uh, for a Firefox uh, extension? Uh, I, uh, no, uh, I wouldn't say so. It's uh, it's pretty uh, similar. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, all the rest are are just comments. So uh, and thank you everyone for the nice comments. Uh, so in order to uh, so selecting two questions, uh, I would like uh, to select the one from. Uh, uh, Yunus uh, about the automated tests. Uh, 
uh, okay. uh, because it was a very interesting question. I actually answered it before I saw it, uh, uh -huh. but uh, I think uh, it's always uh, uh, it's a very good practice. Uh, well, I, I didn't address that uh, in this presentation. Maybe I should because automated testing um, is, is uh, even a, another thing that we need to. Uh, it's a way of building robust applications and uh, and and much more complex applications. So it's uh, it's pretty much essential. So I would like to select that one. Um, let me see. Uh, uh let me see uh, another one so uh i would say uh the one uh, from uh yuri uh, about the uh about the push notification it's mm -hmm. uh, it's a difficult one and i uh, later on i saw dimitrus uh uh, comment and uh, uh, about uh, uh, potentially uh, not being compatible with version three. Uh, honestly, I didn't try it, uh, those directly. I believe there's a workaround, but uh, but yeah, uh, the the question was very interesting. And uh, Dimitri, thank you for your help for sending uh, your feedback as well. That's very interesting. It's definitely another subject uh, that uh, I uh, myself need to explore as well. Uh, Luis, I need to clarify. Uh, do you mean Yuri or Dmitry? Yuri. Yuri. Okay. Yuri. Okay. I, I was referring Dmitry to Dmitry already won previously, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I was referring yeah. to the help that Mitros gave to answer to that question. Yeah. Okay. So here are the champions of the world, uh, you know, uh, and Yuri. Uh, Congratulations, you're both uh, from the Lemonio community, so I'll write you in the uh, personal chat and uh, I'll ask you for a details uh, to send you a Lemonio prize. Awesome, thank you, Luis, for hosting such a lovely and useful talk. Thank Applause. You. Thank you for the invitation. I'm glad to be here and uh... And uh, to share my uh, to share my ideas with uh, w with all the the community from uh, Lemonio. Uh, so uh, development is not a, a set in stone uh, science. So there are a lot of opinions. This is just my opinion, and now I address my uh, my personal specific problems. So don't take these everything that I say as granted. So uh, I I am talking from my experience, and I hope. This additional opinion will help you set your own way and your own coding style. Hopefully. Cool. Um, so I see some of you guys has uh, previously joined us and I want to invite uh, uh, you for the next talk, which will happen next uh, Wednesday at the uh, same time, uh, 5.30 uh, UTS plus one. Um, we will talk about monkey patching and uh, stay tuned. Uh, I'll uh, share with you the link via email and uh, through the Slack channel. Wishing you all the best. Take care and see you. Bye.